I call the honourable member Barbara Stewart. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I rise on behalf of New Zealand First to speak to the third reading of the Families Commission Amendment Bill. Yet again, Mr Speaker, we have been left disappointed by this bill. There have been no substantive changes made that would make us or even enable us to reconsider our position on this particular bill. I have listened very carefully to the speeches from the opposite side but nothing concrete has actually come from there. It is, as it has, um, we have always said, New Zealand First opposes this bill because to date the Commission has failed to make any worthwhile difference for families. A practical difference has not been evident. Replacing seven families commissioners with one will not have any positive effect on the operation of the Commission. Basically, any impetus for change in the Commission has been negated. And of course, as we've heard, one must then question the overall independence of the Commission from the government. Ironically, the support and work that the Families Commission has provided is already being undertaken by the Ministry of Social Development. And in New Zealand First, we have to question whether the Families Commission is really worth the investment when it does much the same work and research as the Ministry of Social Development. We all know that duplication of effort is wasted in these strapped economic times, but I must say that I was very pleased to hear from a national speaker stating that this wasn't going to happen. So we will be watching this area with great interest. So we believe that the Families Commission basically is no longer worthwhile and that its continued existence can't be justified. Today is quite a sad day for Honourable Peter Dunn. It was his, one of his conditions of his supply and confidence agreement with the, one of the previous Labour governments that the Families Commission actually came into existence. So it appears from the outside that the Honourable Peter Dunn has finally sold out his Families Commission when, ironically, he's always been in a position of influence in every government to ensure that it functioned appropriately, appropriately, that it was financed appropriately, and that it could meet the objectives that were set. So quite a sad day for the Honourable Peter Dunn. Where your efforts were, Mr Dunn, I haven't seen them yet. So, in 2014, looking on, it's now time that we work towards protecting the family in times of widespread poverty, rather than take steps and, that would be detrimental to it and money away from this. So, in New Zealand First, we believe that the Families Commission Amendment Bill actually undermines efforts now to protect the family unit and children. Families requiring assistance will look to the Commission for leadership only. They will be disappointed. Although it may be economically and politically more desirable to minimise the number of commissioners to, that no to a lower number, we don't believe that that number should be pared down to just one. And of course, a number of signalled, a number of the families commissioners have already signalled that they will be leaving the role and heading into politics, into parliament. So quite timely for them, but a big gap in the Families Commission, because what we're actually going to see is a major revamp of the role of the Families Commission. And one has to ask, does it go far enough? Do we really need this Families Commission? Particularly when the opposition parties, Labour, is talking about creating another organisation. Hard economic times are upon us. We've heard that story many, many times. And research in these hard economic times has to be forward and focused, and the money could be better spent towards research elsewhere. And of course, there is a total limit to the amount of research that can be carried out. Somewhere along the line, we do want to see something practical from these organisations. 
there is, seems to be a total lack of consideration of the fact that the issues and themes on which a research unit will be focused are totally interrelated and, of course, they cross many social sector boundaries. Because many of the social issues are interrelated, it would make far more sense for the Ministry of Social Development to use that amount of available funding wisely and with consideration of this particular fact. We look at some of the studies that have been carried out by the select committees. The white paper for vulnerable children that the Ministry for Social Development produced last year contains issues and themes that are directly linked to the work that the Commission carries out. And of course, we have to take note of the recent Health Select Committee report. Again, points the Families Commission a way to go, and I know the Maori Affairs Select Committee has also carried out research in this area. All of these solutions are starting to surface and complicate the work that the Commission administers, especially when we're going to have only one Commissioner overseeing the entire body. And of course, this will inevitably have dire consequences on the expected outcomes for the Commission. And here in Parliament, we will most likely be re-evaluating the work of the Commissioner in the future. So, what we're seeing is Version 1 in 2003 did not work out. So we've got version number 2, which is supposed to be leaner, more focused, or so we're told. Our best hope is that version 2 of this Families Commission is going to be monitored on a very regular basis to ensure the best possible outcome, output and out, outcomes, and that monitoring is taken to ensure that the direction that this new Families Commission is going to take is worthwhile for New Zealanders. There is definitely a limit as to how many versions of the Commission there can be before New Zealanders lose their confidence in it totally. And version number two almost reaches that limit. Greater emphasis needs to be put on promoting and carrying out groundwork that creates better understanding and ensures better outcomes for all New Zealand families. We know that New Zealand families are experiencing considerable social and economic hardship. Changing the governance of the Families Commission and reprioritising its budget is only going to compl complicate it further. In New Zealand First, we would like to see an agency that would be useful to New Zealand families for the money that's spent. We will be carefully monitoring the outputs and ensuring that the money is not spent on consultants to travel at the expense of these families. It is for these reasons that New Zealand First is opposing this bill. Uh, the Honourable Phil Heatley. Mr Speaker, um, I for one accept Raj and Prasad's apology.